Dzień dobry wszystkim, I'm Mystical. I hope you guys are doing fantastic today, and I will be bringing you the latest in AR and VR news. As usual, you've got chapters down below to skip to the part of the video that you are most interested in, and with that being said, let's jump right into the video. First things first, we've got fantastic news on those of you that like listening to background audio, which is actually a very large majority of you. A lot of you guys have been telling me for the longest time that you want to be listening to music while slaying some zombies or playing some kind of game on your quest in the background. And for a while, we had some third-party apps allowing us to do this. Then we actually had a feature from Meta themselves allowing us to play background audio inside the web browser, and then pause, play, or go forwards or backwards inside the notifications panel. And well, that's back now. Yeah, with V64, apparently this has been fixed. It's an undocumented change, so we wouldn't know about it. But if you guys are one of those people playing background audio on your quest, like me, using the Spotify web player, YouTube, or anything else, well, that should be working once again with V64. Also, a lot of you guys have been telling me you don't actually have V64 yet and are wondering how you can get it. Well, you can actually force updates on your quest by sideloading them. Video on that right up here. Either way though, yeah, that's a fantastic piece of news and I can't wait to get back to listening to background audio on my quest. Another piece of news that we have is Meta's blog post. Yeah, Meta has apparently posted some information on their visual positioning system, the VPS, and how it has evolved throughout the years. Every time you put your Meta quest and launch an app, your headset recalls details about your room, including the safety boundary space layout, and app content, so you can get into your experience quickly. Uh, those of you that have been with Quest for a while know that this has certainly gone through a lot of updates in the past, and it has had its hiccups. It's gotten to a point now where it's basically working pretty flawlessly for me, and it forgets its room very, very rarely. But apparently this system has helped users recall their spaces over 100 million times since the launch of the Quest. That's a pretty crazy number. I mean, if you put that in writing, that's a lot of zeros. And in case you don't have the VPS turned on yet, you can actually activate it by using point cloud data sharing option in settings. When you enable point cloud data sharing, your quest periodically backs up its point cloud data to the cloud and starts using VPS to determine which room you're in and what your position in the room is. You can turn VPS off at any time and your quest will stop backing up your point clouds. The setting is located under settings, privacy, and safety, device permissions, SharePoint cloud data. You can also activate VPS from the SharePoint cloud data permission request dialog that periodically appears when you set up your guardian boundary. To delete your backed up point clouds, go to settings, privacy and safety, device permissions, and delete shared storage. So those of you that don't have that feature on yet might really want to enable it, as it seriously helps your quest determine the space that you're in, and should hopefully help you get into your game faster by, you know, recognizing the space that you're in. Talking about clouds, this one is a little bit of a different cloud, as Vario has apparently opened up their cloud to the Quest 3. Vario has announced it's now supporting the Quest 3 and Quest Pro for its Cloud XR streaming platform, Reality Cloud, which lets professionals stream and share immersive 3D content rendered on cloud-based GPUs. This helps a lot. As you guys probably know, I mean, the Quest is a standalone device. It's not going to be able to render high resolution and just high polygon cloud content right there on device. So services like Vario's here seriously help out professionals. The Finland-based creator of high-end XR headsets is known for its pricey but high quality mixed reality headsets which are primarily used in the enterprise space by designers and engineers but also for things such as detailed simulation and training you don't need to plunk down the 3.9 thousand dollars for the company's based vario xr3 headset though to use its subscription-based vario reality cloud service which offloads intensive xr and vr software rendering to powerful cloud-based gpus previously only available with vario's line of enterprise devices the update, announced on April 5th, brings support for Vario Reality Cloud to Quest 3 and Quest Pro, making them the first non-Vario XR devices to use the subscription-based cloud rendering and streaming service. So in case that's something you guys are into, or maybe your line of work requires it, well, you should now be able to access it on a much cheaper
cheaper device, which is really cool. It's really cool of Vario actually allowing the service to work on devices that aren't their own. I see this as an absolute win for the consumer. Additionally, the company has also released an iOS application in February, letting users also access the cloud rendering platform from a host of iPhone and iPad models. So even more devices you guys can access that from. Talking about things that are pretty cool, you guys remember that AR concept that we had a little while back floating around Twitter, where essentially you'd be vacuuming around and an AR overlay would tell you where you haven't vacuumed yet? Well, that is apparently now becoming an actual thing by Dyson. If you've been wondering when you could finally gamify your vacuuming routine after seeing one of the more viral AR videos on social media recently, Dyson has you covered because it's actually making this a thing for iPhone and one of its patently pricey stick vacuums. I find it unfortunate that this isn't going to be available, you know, on Quest devices for basically every vacuum. I mean, I bet you someone's eventually going to do something like this, but it's pretty cool seeing a larger company like Dyson actually getting into the AR space, which let's be honest, is not something that is their main goal. And yet here we are, they are getting into the AR space and creating something like this. Is it because that video went viral? Probably, but still it's a company that isn't in AR, VR, anything like that, now being interested in the technology. Plus, as I said in the video where we talked about that first video, I would totally use this. Like, it would make vacuuming a lot more fun and hopefully help me be a lot more accurate. Google apparently confirms that AR announcements are coming at I.O. in May when the Android XR reveal is expected. Google I.O. 2024 takes place on May 14th, and the company confirmed it will include AR announcements. Google is expected to reveal more details about the Android XR platform it's working on for Samsung's upcoming headset. For those of you that don't know, Google, Qualcomm, and Samsung are all working on an AR device together. Yeah, basically the three OGs working on a device that will hopefully be more consumer friendly than Apple's price tag, and will instead be running Android XR, which will supposedly be Android's version of Vision OS. We've talked about this before, but I am excited to see what Google has to announce for us as, you know, I'm a pretty big fan of Android as a whole and as a system. And at last year's IO conference, Google said it would share more about Android XR and Samsung partnership later that year, but that didn't end up happening. So hopefully it will happen now. If you guys are interested in Android XR and that new headset that they're working on with Samsung and Qualcomm, we might just be able to live stream this event and do a little watch party, see what they've got going. You know, Google being one of the larger companies, this is going to be quite exciting. And finally, EA Sports WRC is getting a PC VR mode later this month as a Seto Corsa Evo has been announced. Released last November for flat screen platforms, EA Sports WRC is the latest racing game from Codemasters based on the FIA World Rally Championship, while EA's initial announcement confirmed PC VR support would arrive in a free post-launch update similar to 2019's Dirt Rally 2.0, the Season 4 reveal trailer below provided our first official look at VR gameplay. So in case you guys are into racing games and possibly play WRC, well, you're now going to have a VR update coming for that very, very soon. I know racing games are quite popular in virtual reality. I mean, just look at what the PSVR 2 has done. And some of these games can be really, really realistic. So I'm looking forward to see how well the WRC VR mode plays out. And maybe, just maybe, I'll have a new game to do some rallying in VR in. Either way though, that's going to be it for for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day or night, wherever you guys are in the world. If you like this one, please give it a like. It costs you nothing, helps the channel out a lot. If you disliked it, I guess the one works too, but let me know why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and our Reddit down below, where I'm gonna see you posting your spicy memes. If you guys are Polish, we've got a Polish channel down below. And thank you so, so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys are incredible, amazing, seriously, much love. And thank you to anyone else supporting the channel in any way, shape or form. You guys help me out a ton and all the support is greatly appreciated. As usual, if you guys want me to find a bunch of content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace. <laughs>